Um, around the 70s, late 70s, when Star Wars first came out, it blew people's minds because this was a lived in universe. Instead of like sterile spaceships, everything was dusty and got great to be sort of stuff from different, obviously different, slightly different time periods. So it made things all the corporeal. Rust, dust, um, and it gave us a whole lot more character and reality to the film. Yeah, when you compare, imagine seeing Star Wars for the first time.
idea for this, it's um, shadow down with my fallout, but I was on the bus and I saw a um, dump truck, and it was black, but peeling, and I'm like, I can't be bad, it's my look, I stole it from a dump truck. <laughs> right, bye please. Here is paint, how paint reacts. Often in hot environments, paint can sometimes bubble, so that's something to bear in mind. This is from a cold, uh, it's actually from a house being repaired. So you can see the natural way it sort of takes them off. It's there, little bits, there, little bits. All of it is about not being symmetrical, just letting it naturally flow. Oh, chip. Um, this one is a very advanced case of rust and paint chip. So it's like you can actually see the paint lifting up. Um, yeah. Next slide. Here is um, some examples of fabric now. It's really hard sometimes to find um, good examples of fabric distressing that's come about naturally because it's used in fashion because it's very interesting and it's cool. The holes in your jeans. Then your mum says, I can repair those, you know. Um, anyway. Uh, Things tend to. Have you ever seen when people have done pirate pants and they've drawn big zigzags? Yeah, it works in cartoons, but in real life, stuff doesn't really rip like that. It tends to chip away a bit more core. And the best way to do that is to replicate injuries to fabric yourself. I always find leather is very interesting. You can do a lot of stuff with um, sandpaper and rubbing in. Um, do it pigment, do it colored pigments, and um, especially if it's a real leather, um, which of course I get sick of sometimes I get lucky, you can really dig into it, it takes a lot of punishment. Um, next slide please. Oh, here's what I did, um, I just made a little sample thing. Here's how you can wreck your fabric. Um, this is the first one I did with a Dremel sanding wheel. Those are the little, uh, usually orange. And they're like a little stick on the end of your Dremel push. Um, I've actually got it in my bag. Hand it round. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sanding wheel, and then I got sandpaper and I went real rough. It was quite a quite a low rip. Then I got sandpaper and went a bit more gentle, so if you want more subtle. And then I went upstairs, and I don't know if my, my flatmates know this, but any of them here, no. I got the cheese grater, 
And I think that's a really fun, really good natural um, But basically, sandpaper's my favourite because you have a lot of control. My advice is always start out real gentle because you can always add more, but it's very hard to take stuff back. Um, any kind of sander, cheese or a nutmeg grater. You can use a nutmeg grater. Rasps, if you have any for like um, woodwork. Emery boards like your nail files, both the metal ones and the sandpaper ones. And um, soldering iron also you can use for making holes. They also kind of seal it. So if you're working with anything with a polyester content or nylon, it'll seal the edges. You just have to be careful with the fumes because plastic fumes are not good and you end up like me after dealing with them. Right, next. Another way you can distress fabric is through pigments. You can soak it in tea. I remember when I, would, I used to do um, ballet and you couldn't get like matching beige knickers and my mum would soak my white knickers in tea. So we have matching knickers. A lovely sight, so great. Um, you can also do it with dilute acrylics, dry brushing, airbrushing, matte spray paint. If you don't have an airbrush and you are brave, I like to put my stuff down and then I stand way away and go, Shh. and it just puts a fine mist. You have to make sure the nozzle is very clean so you don't get splatter of just dulls. Um, pigment powders, which I'm going to talk about more because I adore them, they are the best. You can use real dirt, it's free and there's heaps outside. Sometimes I've rolled around in the garden. <laughs> and, you're, uh, and I live in Wellington, so it's very steep, so you're very lucky I'm here. <laughs> That's how I'm going to die. Sorry. Um, shoe polish is something I haven't tried myself, but a lot of people swear by it, and if you look up shoe polish weathering, Something I also found out about that's very neat uh, is sun bleaching. It just requires a bit of pre-planning, but if you've got like a black t-shirt or something, you leave it out on the veranda or the porch, and it just naturally um, it stops it from looking brand new. You can also get effects of like if it's folded, if it's only bleached in that patch. Don't do it with a very high quality one because it won't react as well. But um, I know in the Mad Max costuming group, they do a lot of stuff bleaching with their stuff and they leave it outside. Oh, intake. Next slide, thank you, hun. Okay, here's my case study. I put the photo in the middle for some reason, but you have to imagine it. It's, it's my darkest dungeon, Acolyte, and she's a very dirty girl. Um, <laughs> She's mostly, uh, you're seen underground, and so I'm not in the sun, so I had a lot of think about mold. You can see her hem is a mess. It's floor length, so it's always dragging in the mud and sewer stuff. So, yeah. Um, if you've seen the game Darkest Dungeon, it's got a very heavily black style, everything's heavily outlined. Um, so it was really, I went quite heavy. You wouldn't go this heavy on a more realistic character. Probably. She wanted to. Do you? Next. Oh no. Oh well. Um. Oh. It is not good, baby. Can you open a PD? Seema Squad too. Yeah, hey Lisa. <laughs> right, next slide back up. This is why you always have a plan B. Yay! Okay, this is a build of my headpiece. And um, you can actually, if you're very scientific, which I am not, um, you can actually look out how metals react and which is the most likely to react. Gold is quite soft. I don't know why you'd have a full gold headdress because you're in your the sewer, but you know. anyway, um, I worked it. That's, I, first I painted it black and then I put the rub and buff over the top and you have a lot of control with rub and buff. You 
go over here and just put the slightest little touch of metal on it and let all the dirt from underneath show through. So instead of going painting something gold and then putting it back on top and went the opposite way, um, also next to it is my really disgusting weathering. She's in it, she's a, as I say in a sewer. That's mold. <laughs> Imitation mold. And I went real hard on the sandpaper on all the seams because it's like it started off as a very dark green leather I made it look like a little corset belt. And then I painted it black with ink just but let some of the seams through. And then I went really hard with my sandpaper, just a piece of paper, not a dremel. Just rub all the seams so you can see how the bottom stuck out. Yeah. And along all the edges to make it look real rotted. But yeah, I, I think the moulds are especially disgusting. Here is the hem. Um, it's hard to see, but I made it so the um, mud sort of goes up to about here. You know, I've got underskirts as well, because I like it. But I just did this with a soldering iron and it's very breaky. Um, as if she catches it on everything and she's walking in puddles and yeah. What's this outfit? This is my Fallout Combat Armour. Um, this is how I did the paint chipping. There's quite a few ways of doing this. I like to, I used to just put, I painted, um, first I painted it with a hammered, rust-oleum, galvanised looking metal. Then, I to put blobs of moisturiser on. You can use anything. Some people use ketchup, mustard, anything greasy. Anything that prevents the next layer of paint from sticking. And I got this matte black. Sounds like a man's name. I like to meet him. Um, and sprayed over the top. And then I went to town with my sandpaper, just roughing it up, especially around the edges. Um, rubbed in a bit of pigment powders just to get the this form of the armour shadowed to make the sneak better. It is black and um, Here is where the paint feels off. Yeah. But it's good because you can control exactly where the paint is. Here's some just, oh yeah, here's a close up of this armour. You can see I've wrapped in a bit of rust and um, yeah, Taken that layer off so it has that real distressed metal that's been outside look. Um, and over here you can see this is actually dremeling. And then I've wrapped in to show the erosion. Um, here in the middle, look, I did some foam. I don't usually do a lot of foam, and there are amazing foams in this out there. Um, but I just I did a quickie to show you the how dribble fit foam. Um, this one is just the round sandy drumming wheel. That is the wire, the wire brush wheel, which is one of my favourites. It's real gnarly. That's just a, a craft knife, but I, I went a bit crazy. It doesn't really look like this dressing. It looks like a little hash. Like someone's tried to draw a little bird's nest. Yeah. But um, I think one of my biggest points is just to keep going back and forth. Look at it and then come back a few days later, add a little more, paint a bit more back on. Have a think, have a relax. Enjoy your time with your armor. Next. Here are some of my favorite products. Ah. Rust-Oleum. Rust you can get this at Bunnings and it has a really cool doppled effect when you spray it. It's thick. It is... Uh, yeah, basically, it's a lot of dimension in it. You can see all the pat um, powders spark in it. It's really good at replicating real metals, if you, especially galvanized, is my favorite. And I really like the um, But um, it's one of my favorite spray paints, but I have many. Um, weathering powders, you can get them at hobby shops. They can be a little expensive, but once you have them, they last forever. Like, you're never going to run out. Um, and they come in great, like, war-named things. 
like yeah, the dust, and the salt. Oh, it's so scary. Um, green matter. Um, high grade paint. Um, I started spending a bit more on acrylic paint, and I have not regretted it. Um, they're thick. I like the thicker body ones. Um, again, sadly, um, the more you spend the often the longer they last. But I invest in maybe a few like I invest in colours you use all the time, like blacks and browns, which I do. You may use the other colours, but they're a really good investment. Um, rub and buff. Rub and buff is great because you can you just put it on your finger, no overstrain, and it has so much control. And then you can polish it up and get a really beautiful metallic finish. Um, in, in so the only bad thing is the lids are real crappy and they dry out, but if you just add a little methylated spirit, they kick up again. And this is full as earth, famously used in Mad Max. You can get this at the chemist and even some beauty supply stores because it's the ingredient for Christmas. And you can also wash it out. But it's like a really cool desert dust you can rub in. Next slide, please. Oh, this one to get. <laughs> oh, something I want to mention is about blood. So um, if you don't want to hear about blood, just close your ears. Um, if you're doing blood splatter, make sure that the blood is more on the brown side than the blue side. If you've got a, um, I've noticed sometimes, I've done this before, if you pick a real true red or one with blue tones, it does not look bloody at all. Real blood is usually rusty, especially if it's been on there a long time. And the longer it's been on your character, the browner and crustier it's going to be. So if you're doing a real stone cold mean badass, you recent look at your blood. Call your friend who's a nurse. <laughs> they always have stories. Um, layers are interesting, so I'm always like, go back and forth. The more layers you put on, the more you take off. Treat it like doing your makeup, but not as bad as mine is. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you can always repaint stuff. You can always sand stuff off and start again if you make a mistake, unless it's two days before, which I have also done. But yeah, um, take your time and really enjoy the process and experiment. You can also just um, take a small bit, uh, make a little test piece, and check how realness it's going to be before you apply it to your like, big project. Um, look around you for ideas. Keep those peepers wide. Um, I've said, don't be afraid to experiment. You might come up with something amazing and then do a tutorial about it and share it with me so I can use it. <laughs> so do that. Um, just try, like, there's not one way to do things. There's many ways. Um, people have been making costumes since they put on clothes. So there's always going to be new stuff coming out and old stuff rediscovered. There are so many tutorials and in places you will not expect to find them. I find a lot of my weathering stuff from women who do, why did I say women? People who do shabby chic interior decorating on Pinterest. They have so many recipes for rusting and how to make things patinaed and they all have beautiful laid out blogs with lovely pictures. Um, the other place I find a lot of great tips, I'm not as skilled as them, but a lot of the miniature painters, but if you know people who paint Warhammer dudes, they are your guys to look at. Um, they often have wonderful tutorials um, on really amazing effects. They use airbrushes, they use um, pigment powders, um, and all on a teeny, teeny scale, and I have no idea how they do it. Um, so yeah, just look around you, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Google, if you're in a Facebook group, but, uh, how do you guys do this? And people will come back to you if you like usually 500 answers of how they did that. Sometimes there will be a fight, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, I am going to mention, there is going to be a cosplay contest in Wellington on the, 20th, the 21st at Photon Flux which is part of Play by Play, a gaming festival and expo convention. And yeah, if you would love to come along to that, 
uh, the contest theme is all gaming cosplays, but we'd love to have you tune up if you really want. Um, and it's being organised by some amazing people. Um, I was going to show that video again, but I showed it at the beginning. Sorry. Um, now, does anyone have any questions? I said that in such a scary way. Would anyone like to talk about stuff they're wearing and have weathered? Yes. That is a really good question. Jess asked what I use when I apply paint, and I use everything. <laughs> I freaking love cotton buds, especially the little tiny ones. Um, I use I use, usually use horrible cheap brushes because I wreck them by dry brushing. Um, I use sponges. I use toilet paper a lot, <laughs> actually. I just usually use what comes to hand. Um, I'm like, if, yeah, I don't actually use brushes a lot. I use my fingers. Yeah, but um, I think you'd probably get good results with the brush. You'd have a lot of control. I use masking tape sometimes. At all. But yeah, I really like sponges and Q-tips. Hi, Angel. Um, what's the flaking paint? How do you make that thing? You've got the pieces flaking off. Um, basically, when, uh, when you've got big pieces flaking off, basically what you do, uh, you basically you stand and prep your paint. Uh, your piece, prime it up all nice, um, do your underlayer, wait, I usually wait a good amount of time for it to cure, longer, like 48 hours or longer, so it's fully dry, then I add on the um, breezy stuff and spots I want, and then I do my second cover layer and wait, and usually it is real obvious which bits flake off because they sort of bubble up, and I, yeah, they tend to, as long as you give everything proper drying time, it works out for you. I think you could, yeah. Especially with like an acrylic, because they're late, uh, acrylic latex paint, because they're very stretchy. They've got a bit of stretch to them. You couldn't do it with an enamel, but yeah, I reckon if you used a sort of heavy body acrylic with a lot of high latex content, you could do that. I haven't tried, but I think you could. And I'm sure someone online has probably done it. I hope it works. Any other questions? Hello. What do you seem to use when trying to seal up the ends? So if you're worried about wear and tear on your wear and tear that you're working hard on and not losing it. I don't actually seal a lot of stuff. It just tends to stay on. But um, when I don't, oh my, I can't, I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> I'm lazy. But um, usually a clear coat. The only problem sometimes I find with clear coats is they can dull your stuff. Uh, but uh, a lot of people have fantastic results with them. Um, yeah, um, you go to any Bunnings or Bunnings or Bunnings, <laughs> get, get a in the wrong. <laughs> no, um, and they'll have all their um, variety of varnishes and spray sealers. I think spray sealers are the best because you don't have brush trails. Someone who's more skilled than me would probably do it without brush trails. Mod Podge would probably work. Yes. She <laughs> asked you. So they're asking what my favourite is. I don't know. Usually I look at it and I see all the mistakes. I'm like, oh. But I do quite like my darkest dungeon dress because it's opulent and gold and it has all the bumps from the skull. Yeah, I think that's my favourite. time? 10.38, there's 20 more minutes. No. <laughs> No, I put the video back on. Hey, um, I think this concludes this panel. Unless there are any more questions. Yay! We
we're going to put the video back on. It's okay, you can leave all the videos playing. Thank you. Bye. Now, you'll see our Muppet Monster at work.
brave men. They are heroes to me, each and every one of them. Thank you for watching an industrial shredding video for five minutes. <laughs> you are all heroes as well, and I hope you have fun distressing, painting, ruining, and repairing your cosplays. Thank you so much. You've been a marvelous audience, and I was incredibly nervous, and thank you.